Uh, what I wanted to do, Ed, I mean, this is nothing new for you and I, but what I wanted to do is because I've got Jessica Lindsay asking me about these kinds of plows, to have a plow in front of me so I can point to things and talk about what she might be looking for. Uh, because she thinks that's what she needs with her Mustangs is 10 inch bottom. She wants a riding plow or a two-way plow. If, if she's looking at one of these plows out in the, in the field someplace to try and decide whether or not uh, it's worth going after. The beam is the big thing. Yeah. To make sure that these beams, uh, we, we talk about these beams being straight. This particular international, uh, the Syracuse that I have, and the Olivers, when you look down them, they are not, they're built in a, a triangulated pattern. So that this side, the inside of this beam, runs straight all the way. But uh, it comes off of the thickness and tapers from this point. So it gives you an optical illusion that the beam is bent. But this you is just want to look down this side yep. to determine if that beam is straight. You don't want to look down that at all. No. Now something that you'll notice, I don't know if you've already noticed it or not. This is a real unique IHC, Lynn. This was, this was made, IHC, as you know, this plow was, they bought Perlin and Norendorf. Perlin and Norendorf, yep. Okay. PL. Right here, IHC PO. Yep. This yeah. was, they re-stamped the beams to be IHC yeah. after it was a PO plow. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. So you can actually date this one. You know, right, it was right in that year where they took them over. Right, right. Right, about 1918 to 1919. Right. I had this at 1919, 1920. The seat, though, That's... is uh, 1988. <laughs> <laughs> Cast aluminum for Pioneer Implement in Dalton, Ohio. Comfortable. Yeah, comfortable. <laughs> the, the old P and O. They had that higher rib in the back. And, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, it, it was called a uh, hemorrhoid equalizer. Do you use that much? I um, one way you do. Yes. When you're when you more when you um, have it hooked as a team, then you're going to want when, it. When these uh, these plows, there is a deficiency in in the inherent design of these plows. That's also a plus. Um, when with most riding plows, if Jessica gets to looking at some of the. Uh, frame plows where the beams are hanging off of a frame directly. Like a sulky. Most of them have, have three wheels triangulated and the front and the back wheel have an articulated steering. So There's the, one right over there. If you yeah, when the tongue it. moves those wheels turn so that the plow follows along. That's not the case with this. Um, and sometimes the, uh, especially if you're plowing on a contour or on a hill, you need to move your horses over to get the, the plow to bite against the, the side hill. But uh, what I learned back in the 70s from Ray Drungerson is that this is the best plow for contest plowing. Now this last year at the Oregon Draft Horse plowing match, Mike McIntosh was on a two-way plow and he won. He wasn't using both bottoms. But the reason it's the best is that with the two wheels, you end up having one wheel in the furrow and one on the land. And you don't have anything uh, affecting it on the steering to cause the plow to... Just the horse. Yeah, yeah, it just goes straight ahead. All you've got to do is make sure that you stay in the seat when you're going down through there for that last dead furrow slice. This sure. thing is adjustable too, these, these wheels. Yep. You unset these screws, you can move them out. Yep. There's so much adjustment on this thing. It's unbelievable how much adjustment there is in this thing. Now you will uh, see with these old plows, if you're looking at one in the field, it's not uncommon to see this rod broken, uh, maybe even a handle bent. Uh, the castings, uh, the cast handle, these, these are not cast. Yeah, they're, that's, they're that's cast. That is cast? Yep. This okay. 
uh, those man. those could stand to be if, if they were cracked or broken they could be brazed and you'd be okay as long as you have both pieces or if you have somebody that knows how to MacGyver up something right but the levers are something that you could fix you can you can make them yeah but uh, going back to what we we're talking about before if you're looking at these plows and you're thinking about maybe uh, buying one this this frame you don't want any break Yep. or any bend in the frame you don't want any bend so or do. cracking in the beams and these uh, short axles here you don't want any problem with those and if war if yeah. they're worn really bad yeah there's just no fixing that yeah see this uh, one's um, you can take this all apart it's all set up like this right here you can take this off that off you can actually flip this over turn that around and you can be within seconds you can be back to a team plow on this one this one is this is a really slick slick deal and it's all there yeah this uh you have, have custom made land sides yeah. for this out yeah. of uh hardened steel they were out of hardened what, steel what, what would it cost T21. if somebody were going to just buy that piece of steel that hardened steel just the piece of steel yeah 30 bucks so uh i couldn't find the land sides i could not find them for this plow i looked high and low could not find them I wound up making them. If somebody's looking at one of these plows for the very first time and wondering what on earth they're, what the, this is, the plow is designed so that you're you're not making a ditch. One of these is up in the air and the other one is down, and it allows that if you were plowing, especially on a, on a contour, a side hill, you could plow uh, down the hill all the way, then come turn around at the headland switch bottoms and plow in the same direction that was the original concept for the plow it ends up being really nice for small plots where you don't want a, a trough or a dead furrow out there because you can just start at one side and plow back and forth on the same furrow all the way across the hitch on these plows is different from most others because it has a slide bar um, that slide bar allows that uh, and of course the tongue would be in the middle position oh, here. We're using a two bar. You go like that. That's when it really set. See now it's now what happens is that rolls automatically over there and you just go on that side. Right when the, uh, it'll go to the side that's that's plowing. Uh, so that if that bottom is down, that'll slide right over here, and your hitch is going to be in line where it belongs, coming it's right across. there where it's because I got that one going down in. Right. So it goes right there. Now, one of the tricks that I've learned, and you may correct me, but one of the tricks I've learned is they have keepers that you can latch onto there and, and freeze it, just block it so it won't move. Mm -hmm. they, there's an adjustment here too to raise and lower that whole thing. Yep. So that that, because this is drawn actually by right there. And th this is gonna determine the angle of the draft. So. Uh, if you've got, ways. depending on the size of horses you have, and where that trace comes off, the point of the shoulder, all the way down to here, uh, if it's not right, the plow could go in too deep. If it's uh, if it's too low for the size of the horse, it could lit literally lift up on the point of the plow, and it doesn't want to plow. And that's really that one's really adjustable. It goes up and down. You can use it in any one of them holes. And it's got a star pattern. If you look right there, it's like a ratchet. It'll just you can move it and lock it into place. Cool. Okay. End of discussion. <laughs>